Hey everyone, today we have a different type of video. It's more of a review slash first impressions, even though this product is about three years old. So I will be looking at the Silhouette stamp material. This is where you can use your Silhouette Cameo or other Silhouette digital cutters to cut out your own design stamps. I'm using all Silhouette America products, but this video is not sponsored. It is a product that I have bought with my own money, but I'm just getting around to using it. Anyways, I'm using a Silhouette Cameo and you do need a specific mat for the stamp material to adhere to. In the stamp material box, you get three layers of materials. So I'm starting in the Silhouette Design program and I'm going to be testing out the stamp material using this butterfly. I got this butterfly when it was a free image. They have free weekly digital files you can get and this happened to be one of them. I chose this image because layered stamps are more popular now and I just wanted to see if I could create one at home. From here, I'm changing the mat size. Under the design page settings, you will need to change the cutting mat to stamp. It will change the mat to be 6 by 7.5 inches. Then on the same window, I'm going to change the page size to stamp as well. Now I have the right dimensions and I can just adjust the butterfly to fit the mat. So I'm dragging the image over to the mat. And then on the corner, I'm clicking on the square and adjusting to the size that I want. To change the orientation, I click on the green circle and rotate my mouse until I get it to the position that I want. I just want it to be lined up on one side so that I'm using about half of the material for this project. Once I'm done placing the butterflies on the mat, I'm ready to cut. I am changing the cutting settings to make sure the material type is stamp material. Then it will tell you what the blade setting should be. The menu uses 9 setting, but for mine, I'm going to use 10. As far back as I can remember, I've always had to use a higher setting. So I just assumed it would be the same for this material. Then I hit the send to silhouette and wait for it to cut out. Altogether, it takes about 10 minutes for the design and the cutting. But it definitely would have taken longer if I needed to create one instead of using one from the silhouette store. Moving over to my work table, I'm removing the butterfly from the mat. I'm not really taking too much care in weeding it, except for the antennas. Those are the smallest and weakest points on this design. But tearing the pieces out worked just fine. Some pieces weren't fully detached, but it was easy to fix with just a tug. Once they were all weeded, I mounted them on an acrylic block. Next up, the testing phase. If you're going to use a stamp material, this step is highly required. So I tested all the different types of inks that I have, which I encourage you to do as well. Just so you know, and a reminder to myself, that it does say in the packaging that pigment inks work best with this material. But I still wanted to test out all the inks that I have. So these are the results. Here are its shadow inks leave splotchy images. Before testing the stamp material, I did know that the stamp material needed specific ink, but I still wanted to test it out for myself. So I tried priming the stamp material with an eraser, which means just erasing the top layer. I've seen a few people use this method with clear stamp, so I thought I'd give it a try. And it really didn't change the outcome of the splotchiness. Next up, I'm testing chalk inks. This is color blocks. And this too turned out to be splotchy. So I tried misting the stamp with a Ranger Mini Mister. That didn't help anything. The Studio Calico Dye inks leave spots as well. This is the Brilliance in Galaxy Gold. I'm using black cardstock to see the image better. And I found that it gives better coverage when you stamp it evenly, which I did not. Next up, I am testing Stampin' Up's white pigment ink. This one is Whisper White. It seemed to work okay. I think the ink pad might be a bit dry, so that might have affected the stamping there. And then I'm testing out these small inks. They are Prima chalk inks. I found that these ones do work, but since chalk inks are drier in nature, the colors are quite muted. So when I tried stamping the different layers with the pink and the blue, they were barely noticeable. And the final ink that I tested is Versamark ink. This one gave me the best results. I think it's because the ink is tacky and sticks to the stamp material. I used the Versamark and then used white embossing powder on top and then use the heat gun to melt the powder. And you get a much better coverage from the stamp. Unfortunately, I can't do the layering method that intended with these stamps. At least I'm not sure how to do it without making a big mess. If you have any suggestions how to accomplish this, let me know in the comments section below. 
But in the meantime, I'm just going to go ahead with the top layer of this butterfly stamp and create two simple cards. I'm using the Versamark ink and then I'm stamping an image onto the white cardstock and one on the black cardstock. And then I'm taking this extra printer paper and creating a funnel. I'm pouring the embossing powder over the Versamarked areas and tapping off the excess and use my finger to brush off any stray bits. Then I'll do the same to the other cardstock and use my heat gun to melt the powder. So my overall first impression is to make sure you test out all of your ink pads. Or make sure you have Versamark ink and pigment inks at the very least. This product was very much an impulse buy and I don't necessarily regret it, but because the ink choices are more limited, I'm not sure what projects I would use it for. The stamp material is also very flimsy so the design can get warped quite easily. Wood could potentially bug me depending on the project, like for sentiments or for words. I think it'd be really annoying if I couldn't get it straight. I do love the concept of the product, but I won't be purchasing any more replacements. I like that it was something small that I could add on after my initial large purchase of the Silhouette Cameo. Like I mentioned previously, I'm not sure what projects I could use this for because there are so many restrictions on it. At least restrictions if you want the image to turn out nicely. What are your thoughts on the stamp material? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and good luck with your stamps.